Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, aka Made by Rocka Lily. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a minute. I took some time off. I was gone the entire month of February and also March. I went on a couple trips and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But in today's video, I am going to share with you a new design of my um, little house envelope pockets. These I'm calling little cottages. Oh my goodness. Look at how stinking cute these are, you guys. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Now, I have a signature little house envelope pocket. I've got tons of videos. I'm going to share the playlist with you down below. So if you want to see how I've made other styles of these little houses, but these are little cottages and because they're a little bit wider, and they have a shorter roof line or rooftop. I thought these looked more like a little cottage and I made these with greeting card envelopes. So oh, that's my fault. in today's video, I'm going to show you, we're going to make two of them. Okay. And I have colored envelopes. I have white envelopes and also like vanilla colored envelopes. And let me show you, here's one and Here's another one. Oh my gosh. This one is like a little flower shop. Can you see? And I've taken, so I'm going to use, and I'm going to go through all of the supplies, okay? But I'm using rubber stamps. Uh, we're using Dollar Tree stickers, some trim that I have in my stash, and some scrap papers. A lot of the junky junk that is within reach um, on my desktop. But I also went through my supplies to see what I could find and what I could use for the little cottages. And I love, I absolutely love how they turned out. Let me show you a different one. And of course, once I flip the camera over, I'm going to show you up close what all of these look like. Right now with the sunlight coming in from the window, it's kind of washing out the front of this pocket, but you'll get a really good view of it once I turn the camera over. But look at how cute, look at the stamped window and the stamped door. I use some dimensional stickers and then I'll go over um, what I do on the reverse or the back side. And I'm going to show you from beginning to end how we make these super cute little cottage, let me start over, little cottage envelope pockets because that's what they are. They are a little pocket so you can tuck some goodies in there, a love letter, some candy, or whatever you like if you are using these if you are using these to gift or if you are using them to insert into your junk journal or your diary or your planner that's what these are great for okay so i have a few i have a few others but i'm not going to show you until we get started because two of them are the ones that i've already made but i don't want to give it all away you guys oh. notice i got a microphone do you want to know how this microphone the microphone makes me feel it makes me feel like I need to be on the five o'clock news. Hello, and in today's five o'clock news, we're going to be talking about the weather because it's nice and rainy and sunny all at the same time, like that. That's the mood I'm feeling with my microphone. It's like I'm feeling like a pro. <laughs> um, let's flip the camera over. I'm gonna go through all of the supplies that I'm going to use for the little cottages, and then I'll share uh, some stories about my trip. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. This is a much better view of the four little cottages that I made off camera. And in this video, I will be working on two others with you. And I have used greeting card envelopes, just like I mentioned earlier. And I have done stamping on the front. I usually paper piece. If you've watched my little house envelope pockets in the past, I paper piece and I do some collage work on the front but I've just recently purchased this gorgeous stamp set and I'll show you what the entire stamp set looks like in just a second. And the back, I don't do too much to the back. Um, it depends on my mood really, but these I did cover with some scrap vanilla colored cardstock. And this was the first one. I'm going to say this was the one that kind of inspired me to do the stamping. And this is the paper piecing that I've talked about. So you could see on the front, I kind of hand drew a door and then I used square pieces of paper and little triangles to make windows and curtains and uh, just other embellishments I had on my desk. 
And then I used a colored greeting envelope. And you know, this is one of my favorite colors. And so this, of course, is my favorite little cottage house. And it looks so pretty. So I was recently in Southern California and drove up and down the coast. And all along the coast, there are these beautiful um, homes. And some of them are painted in these beautiful beach-like cottage colors. And so that's what this reminded me of. So I am going to set this aside. If there's anything that you see here and you're curious as to how I put it together or what I used, please just leave me a comment um, or a question in the comment section below and I'm happy to answer. I'm going to go through some of the items that I used and I gathered some floral washi tapes from my stash and then some of these 3D stickers from the Dollar Tree that I've also had in my stash some rub-on transfers that I picked up at the thrift store. I was somewhat hesitant to use these because they, they were from the thrift store and I don't know how old they are, so, but we're going to use these. And you can see how I use them here over that um, inked image and I just love the way that one turned out. <laughs> so, so pretty. So some of them did work and we'll see that in just a moment. And then I'm also going to use um, just a variety of colored and plain greeting card envelopes. These are some from my stash. Sometimes I will find stacks of these at the thrift store. And then others I have in my own personal stash just left over. And I tend to collect greeting cards. And some of those I use because the front of the greeting card is just gorgeous. So I will use those in my scrapbooking or even in my junk journals. And then I'm left over with envelopes. And so that is what gave me the idea to use these for these little cottages. You can see the difference in sizes and I'm going to show you the measurements of the two. Some of them are much larger than others. And this one is about eight by six, where others are just a little bit smaller. And this one I believe is like seven by five and a half seven by, let's see what that says. Yeah, by about five and a half. I also had um, a question just recently about using larger envelopes, for example, A5 envelopes. And because I already had this on my to-do list to record something like this, the question came in just, the timing was perfect. And these are slightly smaller than than an A5 size, but this is also to give you an idea so that you're able to use larger envelopes for this type of project. So I hope that you find this helpful. The inside of the little cottages are lined and I have this leftover tissue wrap, which was actually used to wrap fresh, a uh, fresh bouquet of flowers. And I just thought it was so pretty that I saved it in my junky junk stash. And in fact, I was using it <laughs> to clean off some of my gold paint onto it, but I used it regardless. And then I also used thin scrap papers. And then on some of them, I just left blank. So use, I'm a big advocate for you to use what you have because we all have different supplies. But I'm hoping that this inspires you to go through your stash and use what you have, okay? This is, this is the way I've created my little cottages. I'm hoping that it inspires you to create your own as well. Now, this is a brand new uh, stamp set to me. It is by Iron Orchid Designs, also known as IOD. And this one is called Portobello Road. And I picked this up at a local shop here in Lehigh, and it is a shop uh, owned by Jamie Ray Vintage. And Jamie Ray Vintage is also on YouTube. Oh my gosh, she, she's got a great boutique and she also has a great online presence. So I will link her YouTube channel down below so you can go and take a look at all of the. She works a lot with home decor and that's what these are for. These stamps are meant to stamp and use as home decor. You can even use these on fabric, on walls, on furniture, but I like to use it on paper. And so this is a great stamp set. There are so many beautiful stamps that I just can't wait to use. 
Um, there are some that are like ATC size, so that would be for perfect, great images. But more than anything, what caught my attention were the windows and the doors, especially because I like making the little house envelope pockets. So I thought these would be perfect. They are, you know, they are larger than what I typically use on my little houses, but it doesn't matter. I'm not, you know, it's okay if they're not um, scale to size. It's just the idea of a little house or the idea of a little cottage. So the three that I am going to use in today's project is the brick stamp and then a window and a door. And I'm pointing out how you could also draw, you know, cut down just pieces of rectangles and make your own door, draw your own door. And then you can also paper piece to create your own window. I have now been making these little house envelope pockets for a couple years and the style evolves and it changes. And if you want to see the very first video that, that got me started on these, I will have the playlist linked down below. And the first one is so, they're so cute because they're somewhat whimsical and I use jelly print papers and paper piece the whole thing and I just love how those turned out but the more I work on these little houses the more the designs and the styles evolve but I've got so many different that I've created so just follow that playlist so you can um, so you can see all the different styles okay the first thing I did is I sealed the envelope and I'm also going to cut a sliver on one of the ends and that's what's going to create our pocket. So you saw that sliver. So it's just enough to create a pocket. And now I'm going to place the envelope vertically. And I'm sure I'm pointing out here that I kind of, so <laughs> there's the plain side of the envelope and then there's the side that has the flap. And I usually keep the plain side on the back of the little house so that you can use it as journaling because I don't do too much decorating on the back of it. And I use the flap side on the front because I tend to collage on it as I have in previous little houses. But because I'm stamping on these, I'm going to leave the plain side on the front. That mint colored one, I actually stamped on the flap side and the flap runs right down vertically on that door. That's what I was pointing out but it still turned out really good. So you decide what you want to use as the back or the front entirely up to you. So I'm folding over what is going to become the roof of the house and I folded it over about two inches. I want a smaller roof because I feel like cottages have or tend to have a smaller or narrower roof and that is why I have chosen to do that. When you make your own, you decide how small or how large you want your roof line to be, but I thought two inches was about right. I'm now marking half an inch past that crease line because we are going to cut the sides down half an inch past the crease line to create the pocket for the little cottage. So take your scissors, and then go past half an inch down that crease line. I marked it so that it's clearly visible where you wanna cut. Now, I, I'm i showing you that I marked it um, for visual and instructional purposes, but when I'm creating these, I don't mark it. I'm kinda of guesstimating what half an inch is, and it turns out, it, turn, it, it evens out, believe it or not. But just to give you, a visual I marked it for you and so see I'm just going half an inch past that crease line and now look what I'm going to do here I'm going to take that flap and I'm going to gently bring it over to the left hand side and it's going to catch and stop right at that half an inch cut mark and then I'm going to even it at the top at the bottom see evening the papers make sure they're not wonky and I'm going to crease and I'm going to cut the excess. That leaves you with a little half an inch gap so that it is easier 
to insert things into the pocket. Easier to place like tags or cards or treats into the pocket. So you'll have that half an inch gap between the pocket and the crease of the rooftop. I sure hope that makes sense. And then I left that little half an inch tab there just to reinforce that fold. And now I'm going to glue it and press it down. Because there's going to be, you know, things that are going in and out of that little pocket, I decided to leave that little flap just to add more strength to that pocket. And see how there it it just lines up. Yeah, I'm showing you the sides. So it works out really, really well. These little uh, cottages also remind me of my recent trip to Mexico. And I was down in the state of Jalisco for the month of February. I was there for about three weeks and I had my oldest daughter travel with me. You guys, we had such an amazing time. It was, it was fantastic. This is the first time that I have traveled with my daughter now that she's um, an adult. So we had such a great time. In the month of February, there was an event that our town of Altlan Jalisco hosts every year. And there it's called Carnaval. And they are, um, it is in Spanish, it is Fiestas Taurinas. So there's rodeo and there's bullfighting. And there's just so many different events during this 10 day period. And it starts 10 days before Ash Wednesday. And it ends on Tuesday, which is normally known as Fat Tuesday here. Over there, the fiestas end that day before Ash Wednesday. So the, those 10 days prior, it's a big carnaval with bullfighting and rodeo. And there's parades and there's music and there's dances. Just so many amazing thing, things going on. Um, it is it becomes a big tourist attraction. So that's what we went for. But we didn't go for the entire 10 days of Carnaval. We were there the last five days. And it was, it was wonderful. The weather was absolutely perfect. And we got to dress up in our cow, cowgirl gear. We got some cowboy boots. We got some jeans. <laughs> it was so much fun. We got cowboy hats. And it was so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun it was. But so these little cottages remind me of the homes that we were able to see down when, because we also went down to the coast. We went to a town called Barra de Navidad, which is south of Puerto Vallarta, about three hours south, but only about an hour and a half southwest of the town where we stayed. So after Carnaval was over, we headed down to the coast and we were there for about a week. Poolside, oceanside, it was fantastic. Such a great, great time. And there are these beautiful homes, these beautiful cottages right by the beach with these great big windows and these beautiful wooden doors. So this stamp set reminded me of the facade of all of these beautiful Mexican little cottages and then very similar ones in the in the town where we stayed Altlan and a lot of these homes if you have traveled to Mexico there is so much vibrancy and so much color and so we we got to see so many um homes that were painted in so many different colors greens and reds and oranges and yellows and then they have these beautiful wrought iron windows in these grand wooden doors with this beautiful um, iron work. Anyway, they were amazing. And that's what inspired me to create these little cottages with these great big windows and these great big doors. And uh, so I, when I came back, I kind of immediately grabbed you know, the envelopes and I started working. I wanted to work with a lot of the other brighter colors that I have, the yellows, oranges, and the brighter pinks. Um, but I, I'm playing it safe and I started working with the lighter colored. And so, oh, but I love, I love how they turned out. 
Oh, I'm pointing out this paper right here is scrap paper. It is called Cream Country Crackle. I found this at Hobby Lobby and I thought it worked or it looks great to use as a rooftop. So it looks like distressed shingles or a distressed, distressed rooftop. And I really did just go through my scraps. I wanted to use scraps before I went through and used paper pads or other scrapbooking papers. My paper scraps are growing and the pile is getting bigger and bigger. I used to keep my paper scraps in one container. I now have three large containers of paper scraps. So I need to start using those up. I don't know what to do with all those scraps. <laughs> Anyway, and so, yeah, lots to see in Mexico. I just, I admired the architecture that was down there. A lot of new construction too, and it was amazing. So I was able to see older homes and then newer homes. And of course, the newer homes take a lot of that older architecture and they implement it into the newer construction. So it was just so interesting to see the difference in the new and old, but still keep within the traditions of, of the Mexican design. Oh, it was just amazing. I didn't want to leave. I had so much fun. So after we were in Carnaval for that first week, and then after Ash Wednesday, we went down and spent a week in Barra de Navidad. And then after that, we went back to the town of Altlan to celebrate my grandmother's 100 and second, 102. She turned 102 years old. Now, my paternal grandmother lives in California, but she still travels down to Mexico. That's her hometown. She has her own house down there. And we all cooperated and got together and threw her a surprise birthday party. And it was so much fun. There was live music. There was delicious food. There was dancing. We had, it was just so much fun. And she was so happy to see family and friends that came and celebrated with her. And because it is the town where the majority of my family is from, in fact, both my parents are from that town. So we have a large family that still live in Elfland. I have aunts and uncles and cousins and lots and lots of family over there. And then we also have family from here that travel down to Carnaval every single year. And so it turned out to be a large fiesta for my grandmother. She loved it. We've done this in the past for her. The last time I was in Mexico for Carnaval was 2019. And we also had a surprise birthday party for her for her 99th birthday. Was it 99th birthday or her 98th birthday? That was five years. Oh my gosh, that was five years ago. <laughs> so she was 97 in 2019. And then for her 100th birthday, she had a big celebration in Los Angeles. And that was 2022 because we were still, we were kind of not traveling from 2020. And we were unsure about traveling down in 2022. Um, so we celebrated her 100th birthday in LA. And I was actually after my trip to Mexico. So that's where I was for the month of February. And then I came back to Utah. I had some work I needed to do. Um, I had some, I have some clients that were, we were, I was helping with their house hunting. And so for, for about three, four days, we went house hunting. And then luckily we found a, a house for my clients. And then I booked a flight and went to California. <laughs> and I was in California for three weeks. Oh my gosh. This is the, the longest time off I've had. That was eight weeks time off. And it was amazing. Now, California, the entire time I was there, it was kind of overcast and it was rainy, but I didn't care. I loved being there. I went and I saw my grandmother because, you know, my grandmother went back to Los Angeles. So I went to visit her and stopped by to say hello. I visited my best friend 
um, who I'm, I haven't seen. Gosh, I hadn't seen my best friend. And shame on me. Shame on me for, well, shame on us. <laughs> Since 2019, I felt horrible. And this is my best friend of almost 55 years, you guys. Our moms are best friends. And so when they had us, we became instant best friends, like from birth. And we have been BFFs since 1969. I kid you not. And so I just felt horrible that I hadn't seen her since 2019. And because I moved over here and I came to vacation in 2019 and then I permanently moved back in 2020. And then there was whole sh the shutdown thing. So I didn't see her in 2020. And then I didn't see her in 2021. I didn't see her in 2022. Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, you guys, five years go by in the blink of an eye. And so I really wanted to go see her. I wish I would have spent more time with her, but we did spend an entire day together. And that was a lot of fun. I got to see other family and friends that I hadn't seen since 2019 because, you know, I've, I've been here for almost five years now back to Utah because I was in California. I've been back and forth for a long time. And I know I've talked about this in the past. I moved out here to Utah in 1994. And then in 2010, I went back to California and then permanently moved back to Utah in 2020. So I haven't seen a lot of uh, other family and friends since 2019. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss spending time with my BFF. I love you. <laughs> and then I got to spend um, some time with I got to spend some time with, um, with the father of my children. So, Ooh, that is a whole other story. You guys, you know, I try to keep my, <laughs> my, oh my gosh, my personal business personal. Okay. But, oh my gosh, if you guys only knew, <laughs> maybe I'll tell you guys the whole story one, one day. Okay. But, um, I'll give you, I'll give you some of the information, some of the 411. So the father of my children and, and me, we separated back in 2019. Um, 2008, 2000, no, I'm sorry, 2008, 2009 is when we separated. Okay. And we've only just recently been talking again. So there you go. <laughs> There's that. And so I, we went, we spent some time together, you know, um, so much time has passed and, and we had a fantastic time. So it was another vacation being over there in LA. Um, I went to go eat at my favorite places down in LA and in Orange County, spent a lot of time by the ocean because the ocean makes me so happy, so happy. Just like I spent time in the, uh, by the sea down in Mexico, I had to do it again in California. So much time. I'm pointing out that I'm going to use some wash. Get, getting back to the project, you guys. I'm pointing out that I'm going to use some washi tape in a coordinating um, shade. And look how I point out to this dark one. I really like that black floral. Don't ask me why I reached for this blue one. I don't know what I was thinking. I meant to get the black one. And so then I grabbed this blue one. And um, so I'm going to use some of that washi tape to further reinforce and, of course, embellish that inside pocket, the top of it. And when I trim it, I don't trim it down to the edge. I just fold it over. This way, it kind of reinforces those sides so that it, it prevents from any tearing when you open up that pocket, it kind of reinforces the sides. In the past, I have used the full length of the washi tape and gone all the way across the back. And then other times I just leave it like it is right now. Um, some little houses, I completely decorate and embellish the back and others I leave plain. I use these little house envelope pockets as floating pockets in my junk journals. And I also include one in every single 
junk journal that I make to sell on my Etsy shop. And that's why I create these. I don't sell these individually or separately. However, there have been so many requests for me to, um, to well, asking if I sell these. And I've really never thought about selling these individually. So maybe, maybe I will work on some and really take my time with the detail. And maybe in the near future, I will list some of these in my Etsy shop. And when I, if and when I do, I will let you know. Let me know what you think about that. Okay, I'm going to use some of these rub on transfers and to kind of finish the look of the front. And you can see how I've already stamped the door, the window, and then the brick. I kind of did some masking to add that, that look of the, of the worn brick on the front of the little pocket. I can't tell you how, <laughs> how much I love the way this is turning out. And then those 3D or those dimensional Dollar Tree stickers, I've had those for a while. I really like them, but I didn't know how to use them. And I love how they give you this great dimension on the front. And I only have these two left, but I'm going to try. I'm going to make some time and hop on over to the Dollar Tree to see if I can have or if I can find any more of these because I love, you guys, I love, love, love how that orange tree looks right in front of that window. It gives it so much interest and so much more dimension. So cute. And I thought I would make this one into a little flower shop. So instead of making it into a, like a residential cottage, I'm going to use one of the stickers and create like a little cottage. I also reach for some trim and I'm going to add it to the edge of the roof. And this is trim. I think this is trim from the Dollar Tree. And on one of those, on the other little cottage that you see on the screen in the upper right hand corner, that is ribbon that I've also had in my stash. I'm going to adhere the lace trim with some fabric tack. Look at how cute that is turning out. I struggled with that rub on transfer a little bit, you know, because it's old. And um, so some of it was not adhering when I was trying to transfer it, but I just pieced it together and it turned out really nice. So here's a little little sign to use to create a little little flower shop. How cute is that? That little sticker reads flowers and gifts. I also did some distressing with antique linen all around the pocket. And I'm going to do a little bit on the inside as well just to kind of tone down some of the white from the envelope. And there you have it. Oh, isn't it so cute? Do you love these, you guys? <laughs> are you going to make some? And are you going to, have you been uh, making the Little House Envelope Pockets? I love how so many of you have sent me pictures on Instagram. I will have my Instagram handle down below. So if you'd like to send me um, your creations, I'd love to see. I used some super inexpensive watercolors that I actually found in the toy box to color the door on the right hand side. And just a little bit because it's not watercolor paper. So the, the watercolor was almost dry. I didn't want to oversaturate the envelope. But I just used a little bit of green watercolor paint around the trim of the window and the door. And it turned out really cute. You can also use colored pencils or marker if you want to add more color to your design. I got some ink on the back of the little pocket. Some of the um, distress ink in red. And so I reached for some of this leftover vanilla colored cardstock, and I'm just going to cover the back of the envelope. The back can be used for journaling. If you plan on using these as floating pockets in your planners, diaries, or junk journals, you can do some journaling on the back. These also make great gifts in lieu of a traditional greeting card. 
These make great gifts, you guys. You can insert gift cards, money, a nice little sentiment or note in the pocket, and then write, you know, send a little note on the back if you're using this as a gift. So many different ways to use these. I've actually also made a whole bunch during Christmas time, and I created like bunting where I made a bunch of little Christmas houses and I attached them to some ribbon with some clips and then hung them. So it looked like bunting, so, so cute. I'm showing you here how you can insert a card into the pocket. Of course, you wanna make sure if you are going to use a tag or a card into the pocket or even a tree, you know, cut down your card so that it fits properly into the pocket. Do you see that little postcard on the left-hand side? I'll talk about that in the future, but I have now, I've recently gotten into edigami. Oh, I love, not edamami, <laughs> but etagami. It is a Japanese um, art form. Edigami means Japanese postcard art. And so I hand drew that guitar and then I did some watercolor and then I created my own little initial stamp. And I will do that in a future video because I love, you know how much I love doing scribbly scribbly art, like scribbly faces and just scribbly type of drawings. Well, that's what edigami is. And oh my gosh, I love it so, so much. So I created these beautiful postcards just on a whim. And I love how it turned out. So it is my newest um, love and it is edigami. It is spelled E-T-E-G-A-M-I, edigami. So that will be a video in the near future for you. I reached for a second envelope because I did say I was going to make two little cottages and I thought I would reach for something that was a little bit brighter. I love working with pink. I love all the color, but I struggled with this one a little bit. Um, I, I don't know why. With the mint colored envelope, because it's one of my favorite shades, I had no trouble at all designing on it. But we're gonna go through this one and I'm gonna point out <laughs> how I struggled with coordinating colors and just kind of finishing it up um, to make sure that I loved it. I wanna love, if I'm going to create something, I want to love it. I don't just want to like it. So going through all of the steps again, marking it, cutting the sides and creating the rooftop flap. And I'll show you again how I'm going to cut the excess. So I'm going to repeat a lot of the same steps as I did with the first one on the second one as well. So I am now back to work. I got back at the end of March and today, I'm doing this voiceover today on April 1st. And I was trying to get this video out before Easter, but I got really busy with work and also with my family. I had my family over for Easter Sunday. I made them brunch and then they also brought treats to share. And we spent a full day just hanging out. We had a little Easter egg hunt for the kids. The, we the weather wasn't cooperating. It was hailing, it was raining, it was windy. But we had a little sunny window for about 20 minutes and we grabbed the eggs, we hid them outside, the kids went out and found them and then we came inside. So we spent a total of 20 minutes outside because <laughs> it was cold and the weather's been kind of weird. You know, usually by now we have sunnier days, but it feels like winter again. In fact, we got tons of snow in the mountains. When I say mountains, I am about 10 minutes from the mouth of the canyon. So, and I'm looking at the mountains right now outside my window, lots of snow. And because we have rain, it's really affecting my allergies. So I, yesterday I spent half the day sneezing and I was so congested. I get seasonal allergies and sometimes my allergy medicine just doesn't work. And so the second half of the day on Easter Sunday, I was so congested. Um, sneezed all day and because of all the sneezing it gave me a headache and I tried not to think about it too much because I loved you know 
I, I loved having my family here and I didn't want to be like a downer. <laughs> but oh my gosh, by nine o'clock, my head was pounding from just the allergies and I went straight to bed. And today, and I don't know if you can tell, but I am somewhat um, nasally and kind of congested. And I took my allergy medicine this morning, but that's just what happens. When I was in California, zero allergies in California. I didn't have to take any medication for three weeks. I loved that. And then in Mexico, it was on and off. There were days where I needed to take it, other days where I was fine. Just something I have, I've been dealing with for a few years now. So now stamping on the front, you know, instead of using um, the black archival ink on these brighter color doors, I didn't think at the time, but we could use different colored inks like white. I think white ink would have really popped on the front of this envelope. So that's something I might, I might do in the future. And again, choosing my washi tapes, I have them on this dowel. This is not how I store them, but just for the ease of reaching and showing you what I'm using, I left them on the dowel. I actually have a ring where I keep most of my washi tape. It is a washi tape ring. I get tons of questions every time I show it on the screen. I do have an Amazon affiliate link, you guys. So if you are interested in seeing a list of all of or most of the products that I use. I do have a storefront on Amazon and I'll have that link down below if you'd like to go over and take a look at that. I do have to let you know that I do earn a small commission if you make a purchase using my affiliate link, but that doesn't affect you in any way. And I thank you in advance if you do use my affiliate link. Thank you so much because that, that commission, as little as it is, it does add up. And it helps so that I can continue to create free content for you, you guys. Um, my channel does not do memberships, though I have been asked if I will be doing membership-based uh, video content in the future. I don't know yet. Um, as of right now, I am going to keep my content totally free. And so if you support me by using my Amazon link, that will also help to make sure I keep this as a free, free channel for you. Thank you. And I've had a lot of growth this year. I, I, it's, um, I, it blows my mind. Thank you so much to all of you that have been here with me since the beginning. And I welcome all of my new subscribers. I appreciate you being here. Without you, um, I would not be here. But thank you for interacting with my channel. And a lot of the designs and ideas, um, some of them are derived or come from your comments. You know, you inspire me to create as well. Using some scrap, using the scrap part of the envelope as a mask so that I can use my little rubber stamp. Oh, it's not rubber stamp. It's a, it's a cling stamp, an acrylic stamp. I call them rubber stamps, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> So I was saying I came back. So my vacation ended the end of March and I went back to work. So many of you know that I work full time as a real estate agent, but I also work part time at Costco. I do. I do that in the evenings. And then I do this. Because this is also, for me, this is also like a part-time, part-time uh, work. It's a hobby. I mean, how awesome to be able to, to work doing something that you love. And I love creating. I love paper crafting. And I love creating content for you. So I consider, uh, so I basically have like three jobs. I have my real estate, Costco, my YouTube and then Etsy, which go hand in hand. So I, I keep myself kind of busy. And so when I came back from my vacation, I had to go back to work at Costco. And then I have some, you know, I have real estate clients that I'm working with. So I struggled with content, you guys. I was back for one week 
and I started doodling, I started fussy cutting, I started playing with watercolor, I began doing the edigami, just so that I can get those creative juices flowing again. But for about a week, I struggled. Oh, let me point out what I did. I struggled with that blue floral, floral washi tape, big time. And so I'm just covering it with a different color washi tape, which was more appealing to me because I did. I struggled with that blue one because I meant to grab that black one. I don't know why I didn't grab the black one when I had the opportunity to do it again. I had a brain lapse, you guys. Brain lapse. So yeah, that first week I came back from my vacation, I didn't know what to do. I struggled. And I still have more that I'd like to share with you about my Mexico trip. So I, you know, I like to talk and I like to share uh, my stories with you to kind of keep it all interesting so we can engage with conversation outside of just paper crafting. So I hope you don't mind that. Now I needed to tie in the blue of that little sticker up in the, in the left hand side. So I grabbed these other dimensional stickers also from the Dollar Tree to kind of bring that blue together. And so that really tied it in. So here is a view of all of these cute little cottages. I love these so much. So don't be surprised if you see many more of these in the future. I will now be working on the Little House envelope pockets using number 10 envelopes or junk mail envelopes. And now also these little cottages. Hope you enjoyed this, you guys. Stick around. I'm going to turn the camera over, okay? Thank you so much for being here with me today. I sure hope you enjoyed the making of my new version of my little envelope, excuse me, little house envelope pockets, which are now little cottages. I sure hope you enjoyed these. Oh my gosh, it turned out so cute. So gather your supplies. And I hope that you make some time so that you can create some of these or even some of the others. And just a reminder, I do have a playlist down below so that you can take a look at all of the other types of little house envelope pockets that I have made. You guys are awesome. I'm glad to be back and I'm working on more content. I'll be working on some springtime little house envelope pockets. And I'm, I'm also going to be working on some little golden book, uh, taking some little golden books and making junk journals out of them. So those are next on the list. Thank you so much for being here. You guys take care and happy Easter season to you. Bye.